Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever it is you've tuned in to watch this. Uh, my name is David Duvall. I've got Rob Baker with me on bass and David Lopez with me on drums. Even if you can't see them, they are there. We're going to do a couple of my original tunes now. The first one is slightly over a week old, written while we're all in our shelter. And uh, for myself, trying to remind myself why we're in the shelter. One, two, three, oh. Morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. We are uh, very happy that you are with us today. We have our guest speaker, our very own Morris Amika, talking on a very, very uh, interesting topic that I think we'll enjoy very, very much. He's got a lot of great experience and knowledge, and Nora will be helping out with platform duties today. So thank you in advance, Nora, and let's have another song.
uh, every songwriter that I know also has songs that were written by somebody else that they wish they'd written. I have about, I was going to say 12, but it's really closer to 40, I think, songs that I wish, songs that I wish I'd written. This is one of them. Um, this is also from a Broadway, or actually an off-Broadway show called when, when Pigs Fly. Let me do that again. When Pigs Fly. Although that's not where I first heard it. I heard it on a Bette Midler album that came out at just the right time. The song was written in 1994 when we were just sort of trying to wind up another plague and things were very bizarre throughout the land. And I, I've taught it to some of my students in the interim time and one of them is working on it now and when we were rehearsing it the other day I went, yeah, I really need to share this with people again. Um, it's a song called Laughing Matters. Live at five, CNN, keep us all abreast of breaking stories that can tend to make us anxious and depressed. Problems with no answers hang on like some nagging cough. Every day some brand new issue rears its head to piss you off. Bad guys win. Optimism's wearing thin. Things are spinning out of control. Cynicism's all the fact. those of you who may not be familiar, David Duval is one of our absolute all-time favorite musicians who has blessed us with his music when we could meet in person. Um, this time of quarantine 
has given David an opportunity to um, really write, write some fantastic stuff, so much so that he'll be, he's got enough music for two CDs that he is working on and hoping to release um, later this year. Um, and we will be playing many of those songs that he will be um, re-recording and, and polishing up and, and finalizing. Um, one of the collections is called The Shelter Songs, and I have a, the collection of the the words that I refer, refer to now and then that uh, give me a lift when I really need it these days. But um, we hope that you'll enjoy the selections we've made for today's talk um, from du David Duval. He also has a YouTube channel. You can find him there with a lot of his other music. He is a he has a wide range of musical love and stylings and talents, and I encourage you to check it out when you have a chance. But now we'll get back to our program, and now is the time for the lighting of the Christ candle. This candle represents the divine light within each of us. And our mission statement, we are a welcoming community supporting our mutual quest for spiritual truth. And Nora? There is one presence and one power active in the universe and in my life. God the good, omnipotence. Another new song. This song is roughly a week old. If you are a Facebook friend of mine, you've seen these words a couple of times. Um, this song came into me, into my head, while I was still teaching a private lesson on the phone. It was really difficult to say, wait, 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 I'm not done, I'm not done, I gotta finish working, then, then you can send me these lyrics. Um, then I went out on, on our sunny back porch and sat underneath our uh, cafe table with the umbrella. Penny came out to talk to me and I went, not yet, wait. Um, and then she very patiently sat there while I, figure these out and, and wrote them down. As a songwriter, I think I have a lot of friends who are songwriters, so I'm addressing all of us right now. There are moments when something comes into you, you go, oh, that's particularly good, thank you, whichever you know, divine presence sent this one my way. This is one of those for me. This is also the first time I will have performed it. We rehearsed it, actually. This one we rehearsed um, earlier today. And I, I hope you enjoy it. I hope it brings you some honest, genuine comfort. That's its intent.
Okay, today's daily word, Sunday, July 12th. I am divinely guided. Guidance can be easy to find in the outer world. Maps and GPS technology can help me navigate my way just about anywhere. Everywhere I go, there are signs marking streets, adorning storefronts, and providing just about every kind of information and opinion imaginable. Spiritual guidance often is not as evident, but it is much more valuable. This guidance can come to me as a persistent tug on my attention, as a gut feeling or intuition, or even a dream as I sleep. I pay attention to the guidance I receive and step out in faith to move my steps in its direction. I know that the spirit of wisdom and love within me are always guiding me to blessing of blessings of greater peace, love, and prosperity. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. From Psalm 25, 4. Thank you, Nora. All right, so Unity Happenings. Next Sunday, July 19th, our guest speaker is Reverend Joanna Gabriel. And uh, she, her talk is titled, Are We There Yet? So that'll be fun. She's kind of addressing those long car rides we had at children, as children and wondering, you know, are we there yet? Are we there yet? So please join us for that. That should be fun. And um, as far as we know, we are not going into phase three anytime soon. So unfortunately, we won't be able to meet in person anytime soon as much as we would all love to. So keep holding on, keep counting those hugs that you've missed uh, sharing. And at some point here, we will make up for lost time. All right, here's a new one for you. One, two, three. And now our guest speaker, Maura Samika, Prevent and Overcome Cancer. Hello, can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Morris. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Cindy. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to come and share information today prevent cancer yes it's entirely possible 
Uh, my beloved wife of 36 years died of cancer in 2001. And it caused me to become passionate about learning safe and all natural things that we can do to either prevent or help overcome cancer. And um, incidentally, I, I should state from the outset that I'm not, um, I'm not medically trained and uh, the information that I will be sharing is not intended to diagnose or treat a disease. It's information that I, uh, that I uh, freely share with you as a result of extensive research that I have done over the last 15 to 17 years. Uh, basically, my research into cancer has been unending, and um, I'm deeply grateful for learning things that we all can do in terms of diet and lifestyle changes that can make our body a place where cancer cannot thrive. I learned early on that cancer is not the tumor that's found in or on someone's body. Once again, I learned early on that cancer is not the tumor that, that someone found in or on their body. That tumor is a symptom of cancer, and cancer is really the, is really the out of control process that causes the tumor. And by the way, and I'm not the only one who, who, who thinks those thoughts. There was, as early as 2004, there was a, an extensive article in Fortune magazine where they um, mentioned about a guy by the name of uh, Michael Sporn, who's a, a doctor and a professor at, at Dartmouth Medical College. And uh, it, it noted that he had struggled for many years to get the word out that cancer is not the tumor but but that but that cancer really is the the underlying process that causes that tumor there's another doctor uh, dr uh, william kelly who actually uh, cured himself of um, pancreatic cancer in the 1960s and he wrote a book entitled one answer to cancer where he also stresses the the idea that that cancer is a process and finally uh, anyone can go online to google and you can just put in cancer process defined and you'll find lots of uh, articles and information about cancer as 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 a process so from my research over the many years it's clear that preventing or overcoming cancer needs to involve making sure that we maintain a healthy uh, environment within our body and strengthen our body's own healing power, our body's own healing power. So for the next slide. The next slide, please. Uh, so you'll, you'll notice uh, with these two um, figures that they, they each have uh, a tumor. There's one. There's a tumor in the person's head, in his throat, in the prostate, uh, the breast, and so forth. And we note here again, once again, emphasizing again that treating the symptom is not enough. In other words, treating those those tumors or, uh, or the, the the tumor mass is, is not enough. The tumor is not the cancer, as as was said earlier. It's only a it's only a symptom. Next slide, please. So how can we prevent cancer tumors from showing up and doing their dirty work? That's, that's the, the big question that we want to, 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 to address uh, this morning. How can we prevent cancer tumors from showing up and doing their dirty work? Next slide, please. the uh, cause and effect of cancer. So basically there, there are five, five uh, things 
that we need to be concerned about in, in, in that regard. And that it, one is uh, correcting to a toxic condition within the body. You notice there, number one, it says toxic body condition. So, and second one is, is uh, excessive acid uh, uh, body chemistry. We need to correct that. Thirdly, we need to do things uh, so that there will not be a lack of digestive enzymes within our body. Fourth, uh, a weak immune system. We need to strengthen our immune system. Five, there's a lack of oxygen at the cellular level because cancer cells thrive where there is a scarcity of, of oxygen. And um, you notice this diagram here where it says the fire down below. Just uh, um, with the, the fire, that fire down below is fueled really by five things, by a toxic body condition and then by acid pH in the body and uh, not enough digestive enzymes, and a weak or compromised immune system and, and depleted amounts of oxygen in, in the body. Notice that's A, E, I, O, and then the U is it's up to you. It's up to you. So, um, and because, and notice the arrow goes up and you know, just like um, uh, smoke rises from a fire, uh, the analogy that I have to show there is that, that in this case, the fire down below is what's, what gives rise to, to uh, it's what is the basis of cancer, but what the, the, the um, but the symptom of the fire down below is the cancerous growth or the malignant tumor, which once again is the symptom or indication of the weaknesses that, that I've just uh, pointed out and that we'll be discussing a little bit later. Ne next slide, please. What are some key differences between cancer cells and normal cells? What are some of the key differences? I wonder if anyone is, has ever thought about that. Usually we don't uh, think in, that, in those terms. If someone is diagnosed with cancer, they don't talk about, it's not so much about the, the cells. It's, it, the, the focus mainly is just got, got to get rid of that tumor that's in there, you know. But um, it's very important though, if we, if we give, great attention though to the cells that is the things that make up that tumor. So what are some of those differences? Next slide please. Some of the differences. Uh, notice at the top cancer cells, sugar, lots of it, plus simple carbohydrates. What are simple carbohydrates? Um, white sugar, white rice, um, even brown sugar. Yeah, basically foods that convert to glucose, foods that convert to glucose, are simple carbohydrates. And then it says no oxygen required. Once again, cancer cells require no oxygen. As a matter of fact, extensive amounts of oxygen helps to shut them down. So, so, but with, with sugar and simple carbohydrates, that's how they produce, that's how cancer cells produce their energy and they produce lactic acid, which is not a good thing for the body. And also carbon monoxide, again, which is not a good thing for the body. But on the other hand, healthy cells, let's look at healthy cells. It is true that yes, healthy cells uh, consume sugar and fats, proteins, uh, complex carbohydrates. Complex carbohydrates would be things uh, like uh, black beans, uh, black eyed peas, um, lentil, those would be co complex carbohydrates. And also uh, healthy cells 
consume oxygen and lots of it, lots of oxygen it needs, all of those things in order to, to, um, to produce energy and c carbon dioxide and, 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 and water. Um, sugar, notice at the bottom, sugar, especially refined sugar, feeds cancer cells and it depresses the immune system. Depresses the immune system. Next slide, please. Detoxify and cleanse the body. It greatly enhances the body's own healing power. It greatly enhances the body's own healing power. Detoxify and cleanse the gut. Next slide, please. Um, let's, uh, let's go back to the, the previous slide, I'm sorry. Okay, let me just um, um, discuss a few ideas about detoxifying and cleansing the gut. It's been shown, especially in recent uh, times, that um, that a very healthy gut bacteria helps to make for a strong immune system. As a matter of fact, that it's been shown that something like 70 to 75 percent of the immune system is in the gut. So it, that it makes it very important for us to maintain a, a, a healthy gut. And, and we need to detoxify our body to cleanse, once again, to cleanse, cleanse our intestines and so forth. And there are things that we can do to make, to make that happen. And uh, we will be mentioning that uh, as, as, we, as we go along. N next slide, please. Reduce acidic body condition, as that was mentioned earlier. How can we make the, the, the body chemistry less acidic? I must say this, that cancer cells thrive in an acid environment. They thrive in an acidic environment. That being the case, then it's very important for us to do things to make our, our body chemistry a lot less acidic and more and more alkaline, more alkaline. One of the things that I personally do each morning in order to help make my body more alkaline is that I take um, about two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar in a cup of warm water with about a half a teaspoon of, of coconut oil in it and drink that. That, that helps to, to make the body chemistry more, more uh, alkaline, less acidic. There are a number of things that can be done also to make the body less acidic. Even um, a stress and worry makes, um, makes the body more acidic. So reducing that can, that can be a factor. And uh, eating more foods that more, um, plant-based foods that really that have not been cooked. <laughs> because um, let's face it, when you cook a food, it kills the, the enzymes, at least if you cook it for a long, long time, it kills the enzymes and it also makes it a little bit more acidic. So uh, eating a, a little bit more uh, raw fruits and vegetables also helps to make the body chemistry less acidic and more alkaline, more alkaline. Next uh, slide, please. Uh, this um, is just something to show, show you about ac acidity and alkalinity. Notice from zero to seven is acidic and seven to 14 is alkaline. This is a um, this is information that was that was learned by scientists back in the uh, in the late 1800s. Notice where it says uh, on the pH scale zero is extremely acidic, 
and 14 is extremely alkaline. 6.9 would be considered very acidic. And uh, no, I'm sorry, 6.9 would be considered mildly acidic. And 7.4 is considered mildly uh, um, alkaline. And then 7 is neutral. Uh, water has a pH of 7. Well, it's supposed to have a pH of 7, but a lot of the, uh, of the water that comes out of the tap is just slightly alkaline. And that's one of the reasons why a lot more and more people buy bottled water and so forth. Um, now, considering our blood, our blood, the blood in the human body wants to maintain uh, an alkaline pH of 7.34. In other words, so that's slightly alkaline. That's, that's, that's the blood needs to maintain that level of alkalinity. If it moves much beyond that or much below that, then we die. So in other words, blood has to be maintained very close to 7.34 alkalinity. And, 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 and it will do that even if the body has to, um, has to rob portions of the body to make the blood more alkaline, it, it, that, it, it will do that. Okay, um, and I, I might say, add while we're here, that um, animal protein, meat, is highly acidic. That, that's not necessarily to say that we should not eat meat and so forth, but basically for someone who is challenged with cancer, um, it's been highly recommended that they greatly reduce their consumption of, of meat. Of meat, once again, because it, it makes the body more, more, more acidic, and also there it, it has hardly no no roughage uh, in, in it as well. Uh, next slide, please. Maintain a strong immune system. Crucial. Not enough can be said that. That's more important than that, maintaining a strong immune system. Because um, a weak immune system, a weak immune system really compromises the body and reduces the body's own healing power greatly, uh, greatly. Now, some ways to, to increase the body's uh, immune system, as was mentioned earlier, one is uh, having maintaining a, a clean gut, uh, you know, uh, healthy gut, and some some foods for that, like um, would be uh, plain yogurt, um, sauerkraut, um, and a number of, of fermented foods can help to make for a for uh, Healthy and healthy bacteria in 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 in, in the gut. Another thing um, for for strengthening the immune system is reducing stress in the body. Reducing stress, prayer, meditation, quiet times, being forgiving. All of those things to help um, reduce stress in, in our lives. Uh, getting proper rest, seven to eight hours of sleep, a sleep a night. Once again, very, very important for helping to maintain a, a strong immune system. Next uh, slide, please. Digestive enzymes. Now, why are they important? Why are they important? Well, it's been learned that cancer cells cover themselves with a kind of a coating, a kind of a protein starchy coating. And when that happens, then uh, the immune system 
it prevents the immune system from being able to see or detect the cancer cells uh, and, 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 and target them for destruction. But if there's enough digestive enzymes in the body, especially protein digestive enzymes, then they help to, to dissolve that coating from around the cancer cells. And, 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 and when that happens, well then uh, the immune system is, is able to detect, detect the, um, th that the cancer cells are something that need to, to be uh, destroyed. In the body, so uh, and again, that's that 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 argues very strongly for for um, consuming lots of foods that are rich in digestive enzymes, which would be especially lots of raw fruits and vegetables. Digestive enzymes. Uh, let's say something as simple as say um, an apple. You can take just a plain a raw apple to eat as opposed to say uh, apple sauce there's considerably more digestive enzymes in the raw apple than there than there is in the apple sauce because the apple sauce you know has been cooked in order to soften it and so forth and so on and in the process it has killed a lot of the enzymes and so digestive enzymes are very, very important. Uh, and I might indicate this, that the, the pancreas, uh, the pancreas in our body produces the enzymes that are needed in order to digest our foods. And as one might imagine then in America, since uh, the, a very high percentage of our foods are cooked foods, that means that our pancreas is really working overtime to produce the necessary digestive enzymes for digesting the food, for digesting the, 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 the food which, it, which has no uh, or has no or very few, few enzymes. Digestive enzymes, very, very important. Next slide, please. Next is oxygen. Oxygen is one of the most important nutrients in the body. Without it, we can live for only a few seconds. Unfortunately, most of us do not get enough oxygen. And I'd like to make, give you a few more quotes about oxygen. Um, Yeah. Oxygen. Cancer cells are destroyed in the presence of high amounts of oxygen, as was mentioned earlier. One way that you can, we can get more oxygen in our bodies is by doing deep breathing, deep breathing and, and, and doing it often. And breathing through the nose to the mouth for, to the count of, of of four and holding it for about to the count of three and then breathing out slowly to the count of eight. It brings in more oxygen. Brings in more oxygen. Um, just also um, doing uh, juicing, wheatgrass juicing, uh, deep green leafy vegetable juicing that uh, it's because they, they are very rich in chlorophyll which in turn boosts the red blood cell counts and that gets more oxygen directly into into the cells even uh, uh, doing exercise walking trampoline jumping that's that helps to to integrate more oxygen into the cells. Smaller meals, uh, drink, drink water that's slightly alkaline and, and, and ionized. Uh, it lets oxygen 
in the in, in, into the gets more oxygen into in, into the to the cells, and when possible, allow fresh air into each room of your house if it's not too cold or what have you. By the way, um, the there's a gentleman by the name of Otto Warburg, Otto Warburg, a German scientist who won the Nobel Prize in 1931 for discovering that, that cancer cells do not need oxygen, that they do not thrive on oxygen, but that healthy cells need lots of oxygen. Otto Warburg, uh, it's a very, very important discovery that, that he came up with. There's also a book that's titled Oxygen, Nature's Most Important a dietary supplement. And in the introductory, some of the words, it says, oxygen is perhaps the most important element on the planet. It is the key to life. It is the key to life. Uh, actually, oxygen um, um, is, is, cannot say enough about it. And finally, um, I should indicate to you, there's hydrogen peroxide. One way to get more oxygen into the body, another way is a person can do um, uh, soak in hydrogen peroxide water. That is, that would be the 3% hydrogen peroxide that you buy at the drugstore. Put about a pint of that in, in a tub of warm water and, and it puts more oxygen into the body through 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 the skin through the skin there's more than one type of hydrogen peroxide another type is one that i'm going to just say a couple a few words about and it's called 35 percent food grade hydrogen peroxide and you do not find it very much you almost have to go online to find it but 35 percent food grade hydrogen peroxide People put just a few drops of that in, uh, drink, in uh, their drinking water, and that puts lots more oxygen in, into the body. You can learn more about that from a, a book that's titled The One Minute Cure by Madison Cavanaugh, 35% food grade hydrogen peroxide. But again, the 3% the hydrogen peroxide, which you could buy from the drugstore, what have you, you, you you would not drink that, but you can put it in your in the tub of water and soak in it, and it puts off more oxygen into the to the body. So anyone who's uh, who is uh, challenged with cancer would do well to try to to introduce more oxygen into the body. Finally, there are a couple of supplements that I give high marks to. One is called Oxygen O. Oxygen O, and basically you, it comes in a liquid, and you just put um, about ten or fifteen drops of that underneath your tongue, and you hold it for a few minutes, and it puts more oxygen into the body. Another one is Oxy Lift, and you could put drops of that into drinking water, and that makes makes more oxygen. The oxygen in the water it makes more of it go into the, into the bloodstream. Um, next slide, please. There are superfoods that help to fight cancer. I think many of us know many of those superfoods that help fight help to, to fight cancer. And um, I really give high marks, very high marks, to the following foods: turmeric and curcumin. By the way, curcumin is one of the active ingredients that's in turmeric. So basically I say turmeric and curcumin and um, ginger root. Also mushrooms, especially uh, reishi mushrooms and, um, and, uh, and also um, garlic, lemons, avocados, greens such as kale, mustard greens, collard greens, Swiss chard, 
And believe it or not, aloe vera, aloe vera gel. Most of us, we think of putting the aloe vera on, you know, on our skin and so forth. But the actual, the actual aloe vera gel itself can be consumed and it, it's extremely uh, health enhancing. enhancing. Uh, let's see, did, did I mention uh, especially, um, yeah, garlic, a very, very strong superfood for, for helping against, against cancer. Um, sprouts, uh, broccoli sprouts, things as well. Next slide, please. And, um, oh, and, and by the way, um, we're about to be treated with one of the healthiest anti-cancer foods right uh, around us. And believe it or not, that would be blackberries. Within the next few weeks, blackberries will be ripening and they are an extremely uh, strong anti-cancer -can food. Okay, uh, relative to cancer cells, what is something called apoptosis and what is angiogenesis? Well, apoptosis, healthy cells have the ability to commit suicide when they do not function properly. And that's called apoptosis. Cancer cells do not have that capability. They do not come with that capability. Anti-angiogenesis. You know, angiogenesis basically means uh, the ability to, uh, to, to, to create um, uh, veins, more veins to, 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 make more, to make more cells. And with cancer cells, we do not want them to, to create more veins to make more, to make more cancer cells, right? Obviously. So we, so we want to, we want to do things to prevent them from being able, able to, to, um, to make more cancer cells. So that's why we have anti-angiogenesis, anti, in other words, so there are, and luckily there are foods that are anti-angiogenic. In other words, that, that, that help to prevent cancer cells from, from being able to, to extend themselves by making more veins to, um, to, 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 produce more, to, to, to produce more cells. Next slide, please. Um, okay, this one. Okay, could we return to the to the to the uh, to the previous slide? I'm sorry. Return. Okay, right. Uh, I'm going to give you some examples of of uh, apoptosis foods and 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 angiogenesis foods. Um, basically turmeric and curcumin uh, and, 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 and cruciferous vegetables, yeah, such as cabbage and, and kale and so forth, those, those are, are apoptosis foods. So when we consume those, that helps to, to, helps to, um, to give cancer cells the ability to, to commit suicide. It helps them to, to, to you know, so, so, so that, that's, that argues very strongly for consuming those, those, those foods. And there are others as well. You can go online and just put in apoptosis cancer foods and a number of foods will, will come up. Anti-angiogenesis foods, Many of them are berries, as I'd mentioned before, blackberries, raspberries, blueberries, and also cruciferous vegetables, once again, uh, garlic, turmeric, uh, dark chocolate, green tea. All of those things are anti-angiogenesis foods. In other words, so basically they help to prevent 
cancer cells from spreading, from spreading. Um, next, next slide, please. Now, there are three cancer tests that are safe, reliable, and non-invasive. By the way, most of the cancer tests that we know about, the conventional ones, are invasive tests. These tests that I'm going to tell you about are, are, are non-invasive, safe. And the good thing that I especially like about them is that they um, they give an, an indication of the cancerous process long before a tumor uh, develops, long before there's actually a, a tumor that develops. And, and I, I can tell you about that personally. Basically, the first test is the HCG immunoassay test, the HCG immunoassay test. This is a urine test that's done by the Navarro Medical Clinic, which is located in the Philippines. It only costs uh, $55, and you send a, um, a, a urine sample. One problem, however, at this particular time, uh, unless it has changed as of a few days ago, uh, the Postal Service has not been sending things to the Philippines as a result you know, of the, the coronavirus situation that we're facing and so forth. So, um, so for right now, I think maybe that, that, that uh, uh, test may have been shut down for a bit, at least for us, you know, for getting the, you know, for getting the uh, sample over to the Philippines. The next one is the thermography test. Once again, uh, it's, it's non-invasive, it uses uh, infrared camera to detect uh, heat patterns and and blood flow in the breast. It detects cancer activity long before the tumor actually forms. And then finally, there's the AMAS test. The AMAS test. This test is administered by the Onco Lab out of Boston, Massachusetts. It has been ordered. Uh, it has to be ordered by a physician. And the cost of it is like two hundred and fifty dollars. So a, a physician has to, or either either a physician or a medical practitioner has to uh, to authorize it. Um, the uh, the AMAS test is also uh, known to detect cancer activity months before the tumor actually forms. Um, by the way, I, I'm I'm familiar with. The first test and the last one, the HCG immunoassay test and the AMAS test. I've I've taken those those two. Um, because when I was challenged with some prostate issues uh, back around 2005, or uh, whatever that would have been about 10, 15 years ago, I took the HCG immunoassay test, and the results came back. It said that yes, the cancerous process has begun in your body. So I started eating more, more raw foods. And um, then about a month or two later, I took the test again. They said still no change, but I continued. And then I finally, I started eating uh, apricot kernels. I, I increased apricot kernels up to about 45 a day. And after about a month and a half, I took the test again, and the results, it came back, it says, uh, yes, you're pre there's no indication of any cancerous process going on in your body. So this, this was something that took place over about three, about three months. And I am very grateful to have learned about the HCG immunoassay test. And, and once again, if, if uh, the process had, had continued, then eventually there would have been a tumor mass, you know, in my prostate. And, uh, you know, that would have been qu quite, quite a problem. Um, 
for the, the, the next slide, please. Okay, there are four safe and all natural approaches that many people throughout the world are successfully following to overcome cancer. Four, four of them. There, there, are, probably, there are probably others, but these are, are four that, I, that I'm sharing with you, that I've identified and, and, and I'm sharing with you. Um, let's, talk, let's talk first about the, the, the one that I just mentioned about the apricot kernels, apricot kernels. Um, it turns out that apricot kernels have, there's a, um, something in them called nitrilicide. Nitrilicide is a nutrient that's found in some fruits and vegetables. And if consumed in proper amounts, it has been proven that this nutrient can prevent and help one to overcome cancer. Thanks to the research done in 1952 by a highly respected researcher named Dr. Ernst Krebs, who proved that cancer is a deficiency disease that's often brought on by not enough nitrilicide in the body. I had done a lot of research on that, and so that's why uh, I had no hesitation to go ahead and and start consuming lots of apricot kernels when when I when I had my my prostate my prostate challenge. Uh, by the way, um, uh, they 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 also are referred to as B17, and maybe many of us have heard of something called laetrile. Well, basically, laetrile is just the the extract of apricot kernels. You know, so a lot of people will go go to laetrile has been outlawed in America. It was outlawed in the 1970s in America. So a person has to go to Mexico to to have laetrile, uh, you know, uh, put in their bodies and so forth. But um, a simpler way is the way that I did it was it just simply just by eating the apricot kernels, especially if they're eaten um, through, throughout the day, not all at once, but gradually through, throughout the day, you know, uh, uh, six or eight or so every other hour or so until you've, until you got about 40 or 50 throughout the day and to keep that up for, for about a month. And um, so, see, um, I mentioned here, uh, fortunately, there, there, yeah, there are foods that contain nitrilicide, and it's a good thing to consume some of them daily, to consume some of these foods daily. What, what are some of those foods? Lima beans, lentil, black beans, sprouted, sprouts, barley, millet, blackberries, raspberries, flax seeds, walnuts, cranberries. But out of all those foods that I just mentioned, apricot kernels are by far, have by far the highest amount of the nitrilicide in them. And I must admit, apricot kernels are a little bit on the bitter side. But so when you chew them, uh, chew them, and then when you swallow some water right afterward, well, the bitterness go, goes away. But with me, I had no problem because I, I just would remind myself, yes, apricot kernels are bitter, but cancers, cancer cells are a hundred times more bitter. So I would just, I continue to, to chew them. I know some people maybe would mix them up and put, put them with honey or something like that. Um, that's your personal choice, fine. Uh, my personal choice was to simply eat the apricot kernels the way they were. Um, the, okay, so that's apricot kernels. And, 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 and there are a number of people who are, who with diet, with their diet and, and, and apricot kernels who are overcoming cancer. We do not hear about it on the news. But it is a fact. It is a fact. Now, the second one, 
would be vitamin C, high doses of vitamin C. It was learned that um, um, a high doses of vitamin C can help to uh, kill cancer cells. And that, that was learned um, around 2008. Um, let me just say this, uh, Linus Pauling, uh, a noted scientist, is the one who came up with that idea many, many years ago, I think around in the 1950s. And then, but then it was tested. People, they took high doses of vitamin C, you know, by, by the mouth. But then when you take them orally, of course, then that gives you di diarrhea and so forth. So you cannot take enough of them. But if you put vitamin C into your body through intravenous vitamin C, you can put large amounts of it into the body and that helps to, to kill cancer cells and it does not adversely affect healthy cells. That, that would be in, uh, intravenous vitamin C. And fortunately, in more recent years, there's something called liposomal vitamin C, L-I-P-O-S-O-M-A-L, -L, liposomal vitamin C in liquid form. And, and it is a lot like the intravenous vitamin C because it, it goes around the digestive system and goes directly into the bloodstream. And so more of it, more of the vitamin C gets put into the bloodstream and, and the more that gets put into the bloodstream, the more it, it can kill the cancer cells. Once again, people are doing, are using these things, either intravenous vitamin C or a liposomal vitamin C and, and that along with uh, with a, a diet, you know, of lots of raw fruit, fruits and vegetables, they, it's it's helping them to to overcome cancer. And again, you do not hear about that on the regular news, but it is a fact. That is a fact. You can go and look at situations on YouTube about it, and and also on some of the health magazines. The third one would be ketones ketones, which is, there is something called the ketogenic, uh, ketogenic, um, um, diet. And, um, and, and the ketogenic diet basically is if the, the cancer cells thrive on as I mentioned before, on glucose. But if you deny them glucose, do not deny them glucose. Instead, you eat foods that produce ketones. Healthy cells can, can live very good on, ket on ketones. Healthy cells do. And, but, but, but that's not the case with, 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 um, with cancer cells, because cancer cells, as I said before, they have to have uh, glucose in order to live, in order to, to thrive. Um, the next one would be heat. More and more people are learning about the benefits of heat for killing cancer cells. That is going into a sauna, uh, infrared sauna, there is also something called a biomat, which puts heat deep into the body, deep into the body. Uh, temperature is up to about around 108 degrees Fahrenheit for about 40 minutes, really helps to kill cancer cells, but it does not kill the healthy cells. Healthy cells can handle heat up to about 115, 116 degrees, at least for a little while. But cancer cells, um, you know, if, if, they, if they're exposed to heat up to about 108 degrees, then after a while, it, 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 it kills them. Um, so, so those are four, four things that people are doing. Heat and, and putting ketones in their body and then vitamin C and then apricot kernel. Those are four things that, that people are doing to help overcome cancer. 
Next slide, please. Or the next slide. Okay, I'll leave with, with these notes. Uh, ne next slide, please. Quickly, your food shall be your remedies and your remedies shall be your food. Yeah, that's Hippocrates, the, the father of modern medicine. Your food shall be your remedies and your remedies shall be your food. Next slide, please. Each patient carries his own doctor inside him. They come to us not knowing that truth. That was Dr. Albert Schweitzer. That one. Next slide. We can choose to shut down the out of control process that causes cancerous tumors to thrive in our body. That's from yours truly. So we can choose to shut down that cancerous process. Next slide, please. God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth and every tree which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat from genesis 29 and I'd like to Uh, just a minute, just a minute. I'm looking here for a quote. Okay. Uh, at the end of my, my book, uh, Fear Cancer No More, I've written two books about cancer and nutrition. At the end of my, of, of my book, Fear Cancer No More, it's uh, entitled A Spiritual Perspective. A Spiritual Perspective. I say here that say that cancer cries out for us to do more than treat its symptom. It's important that we approach it holistically. In that regard, there is a spiritual component that must always influence our attitude and support all that we do in seeking to either prevent or overcome cancer. Cancer challenges us to look beyond our human selves and connect with the Christ spirit within us. Once again, this Dr. William Kelly that I mentioned before, who was a dentist who in 1965, who cured himself of, of advanced pancreatic cancer. In his book, here's a couple of quotes that he made from his book. One, he says, he says, quote, if your cancer has caused you to stop, think, pray, and know God better, it has been a blessing to you. Then he goes on to say, if your cancer has caused you to realize the importance and magnificence of this simple, of this temple wherein your soul dwells, you have been doubly blessed. End of his quote. Then I go on to say, have faith in God and know that God will never leave you. Faith replaces fear and anxiety with the peace and joy for living each day and living not as a quote unquote cancer fighter, but as a child of God who welcomes each day's gifts, even while facing the challenge of a serious illness. My grandmother in Fargo, Arkansas, used to sing a soulful refrain, and it was entitled, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. I still remember part of the lyrics. Oh, what, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. 
all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Scripture tells us that we are created in God's likeness and image, and God, who is neither male nor female, is spirit. Therefore, the essence of us, the part of us that experiences life everlasting and knows no illness, is spirit. And so it is that at any given moment, we can tune into our highest sense of God consciousness, visualize health, put aside any fear of cancer, and know that all is well. Finally, from Matthew 28, 20, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Um, and finally, uh, with the, the uh, COVID-19 challenge that we're all facing, I'd like to just kind of close by mentioning that, that um, you know, I've talked a lot about, about the immune system. Well, it, it turns out that the immune system is extremely important as it relates to to uh, preventing and overcoming uh, the COVID-19, extreme, extremely Im important. Um, here's a little quote here from the National Cancer Institute. It said, says, some cancer treatments such as chemotherapy can weaken your immune system and may increase your risk for severe illness from COVID-19. Once again, that just emphasizes the importance of, of, a, of a strong immune system. Uh, and, and, and another thing is uh, vitamin C. Uh, back on March 3rd of 2020, the government of Shanghai, the, they mentioned that China has announced its official recommendation that the COVID uh, that COVID-19 should be treated with high amounts of intravenous vitamin C. Intravenous vitamin C. High amounts would be uh, 4,000 to 16,000 uh, milligrams a day, it was recommended. And another vitamin that's very been proven very important in that regard is uh, vitamin D, vitamin D3, vitamin D3. And the darker one's complexion, the more vitamin D3 one needs. One needs. Um, that may even be one of, the, one of the reasons why more people of African descent are more challenged with, with the COVID-19. Maybe we do not get enough of, of the vitamin D3. Um, so with that, I will close my remarks and I Greatly sorry that it extended so long, but I, I greatly appreciate this opportunity and uh, blessings to everyone. All the best. Morris, thank you for that. I mean, that was an incredible talk. Um, I'm going to jump in, ask a couple of questions, and I'm going to up, open it up to everybody to see if they have a couple of questions for you. Would that be okay? Yes, by all means, right. All right. So I was looking up as you were talking about the, you got me very curious, of course, about the apricot kernels. And I almost had heart failure when the first thing I opened up, but it went to apricot kernel oil, which was extremely high in fat, right. but the, the just the raw, bitter apricot kernels, mm -hmm. uh, not nearly as bad. So that, that was a good thing. And there are a lot of sources online, folks, if you're going to start looking into that. Um, mm -hmm. Morris, is that how you have to find them, is, is by ordering them online? I ordered them online, and there, there's a company called uh, Apricot Power in California. Uh, I, yeah, I must admit, there are not very many places where you can get them. And, and, and I will say this, too, that um, there, I found that there are some apricots that are, that are slightly sweet and not so bitter. I, I do not trust them. I only trust the ones that are bitter because the, the, the bitterness, that's, that's the, where the nitrilicide comes from. So once that again, if, it, if you just go to Apricot Power in in uh, in uh, the in the uh, company down in in California, uh, okay. Go okay. Ahead. Yeah, yeah. It seems with the bitterness and then with the fermented 
foods. Those I've heard that in several different talks and researching that I've done. My sister has been battling two different kinds of cancer and has had her immune system wiped out. So that's kind of spurred me to do some research. And I recently lost a very dear friend um, to cancer. So, and she tried a lot of these things to, um, to help. Um, with the soaking of the hydrogen peroxide, the 3%, are um, you just talking just a straight soak, like put it in a tub, put your feet in there, or is that something you could put into a bathtub, but would, would diluting would, it lessen the effectiveness? I would just run a tub of hot water and put, the, put your whole body in it. And you oh, put okay. it as, as many as one or two pint, pints of 3% hydrogen peroxide and, 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 and sit in it, you know, and, and while, you, while you're in it, just, you know, rub, portions of your body that way to help to, to, to open your, your cells, the, the skin, skin up to, to get the more of the oxygen in through the skin. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So and, putting and, it into and, a, and, 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 it, and into what? <laughs> into the bathtub then won't dilute it. It won't make it less effective by doing it that way. Right. No, it does not. Wonderful. Uh, in the supplements, after oxygen, oh, you mentioned something, oxy-lift? Oxy-lift, right, yeah. L-I-F-T? I think it's spelled L-Y-F-T. L-Y-F-T, okay. And, and I believe the, the, there's a website, I think it's called Oxygen America. In America, but, but by putting drops of that into the water, that helps that helps to make the, the oxygen that's in the water go into the cells of the, of the body. I mean, yeah, into the, in the cells of the body a lot more easy. Excellent. Okay, I'm gonna open, I'm gonna unmute everybody and see um, if anybody else has any questions. Would anyone else like to ask Morris anything? Yeah, I, do, I have a question for him, Cindy. Um, uh, Morris, do you eat much meat or do you stick with mainly like fish and poultry or, you know, what's your um, dietary thing in that area? Uh, I, I, I eat more fish, tuna fish and a little bit of salmon. And I would say I probably eat, eat maybe some chicken, maybe once or twice a month if that. Maybe chicken or turkey, but but I, but as far as any pork or beef, I just I definitely stay away from them. Oh, okay. Right, but my 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 proteins consist mainly, I guess you could say, of, of things like eggs and yeah, and and the uh, and fish and and also you know there's a lot of protein in in nuts also like walnuts and pecans. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, anyone else have any other questions? Um, I, might, I might indicate, and I forgot to tell you that, you know, um, with, with the COVID 19, yeah, I, I strongly support, you know, the distancing, washing your hands frequently, and all that, that's very, very important. But uh, I just feel that we all need to give a lot more emphasis to doing things to also that, that to keep our, uh, to, to maintain a strong immune system. Because even, even if someone happens to get the virus, to, to, to get it, if, if they have a strong immune system, the chances of them getting over it is extremely good, you know. So a strong immune system is very, very important. Absolutely, Morris, and that is good information. I did also read the studies where they were, early on, they were recommending the um, IV vitamin C as a treatment, um, especially in China. They had really kind of attacked it large that way. So, right. and yeah, there is a lot of recovery, so we don't need to buy into the fear, but like you've been making very clear just taking these pretty easy steps to boost our, our own immune system it is within our control maybe not necessarily in our willpower but it is definitely in our control to make some of the, these changes right morris well, do you do you follow the keto diet 
at all or in yes some... yes pretty, pretty much yes that's right i i eat very 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 little um uh, simple carbohydrates not not so much simple carb i eat some complex carbohydrates that is to say lentil and black eyed peas lima beans you know those are complex carbohydrates but as far as just the simple simple carbohydrates uh i don't eat it's eat them very very much and um uh, avocados are big I, i'm big in avocados yeah I, I, the keto diet i i would say yeah that i i follow the, the keto diet to, to to a great extent do you use cookbooks <laughs> mm, no really about the only thing that i cook would be the, those beans that i mentioned to you you know about lima beans and lentil and black beans and so forth uh, um and once in a while <laughs> i'll make myself a pancake but that might be okay that might be once a month or so but for the most part there's not a lot of cooking here in my apartment <laughs> okay nora i have some keto cookbooks i actually made a keto chocolate cake when we were still oh. meeting in person that um most people couldn't even tell that it wasn't made from you know all the other stuff they were used to it was wonderful so i have a, a sweets keto sweets and keto breads i think or something so the next time you're over i'll show you those okay there are lots of recipes online for the keto diet as well for those who are interested you do have to use you know almond flour and monk fruit and and coconut flour and different items of course but um and i've tried some recipes that were not as successful as i had hoped but you know <laughs> you figure it out as you go along i imagine okay. all right well morris right. thank you so thank much you. Yes, I think yes, it's given us a you. lot to think about, and um, of course, we'll be in touch. And yes, Morris has written a couple of books, and we'd be happy to share that information with you um, if you're interested to help find um, the books that he's written, the information to order those books. He's a wonderful author. Yes, yes and, please. And I'll be happy, I would be happy to email uh, a copy of either one of my books to, to, to anyone, any one of the listeners. It doesn't cost that. I'll do that as a compliment. Oh, yeah. Morris, that's wonderful. Anyone that's who would like who would like a, a, <laughs> an ebook. One book is sixty-four pages long, could be read in a couple nights, and but the other one's a little bit longer. It's about one hundred and seventy-five pages. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, let's uh, continue on with uh, some more music from David Duvall. Hey, hello again. This is another song I've written in the last couple of weeks uh, to sort of make a commentary on our current state of shelter in place. This is the first time I've performed it, sung it anywhere. You are going to be the first people to hear it. See if it resonates with you. I hope it does.
before doing that because I was I didn't have it ever done it before I forgot to say that a lot of that is uh, based on a wonderful talk that my friend Reverend Jackie Holland did at uh, CSL in Boise uh, a couple of Sundays ago and I wanted to give her credit for delivering words that I couldn't find myself so I could turn them into this song so thank you Reverend Jackie love you very much Okay, and now is time for our offertory. As you prepare your tithes and love offerings today, think about how blessed you are, and as you're writing your check or giving your gift, send your blessings out. We do have two ways for you to do that. You can mail in your check to Unity of Bremerton, and you can make a donation online at our website, www.unitybremerton.org. Divine love in and through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. All right. And actually, we're going to do our um, Wheel of Names. It's the second Sunday of the month. So for those that... Uh, made contributions last month that wanted to be included um their names are on the wheel there are some who have opted not to have their names on the wheel for whatever reasons and that's okay are you seeing it mm -hmm. okay all right so we're going to go ahead and spin the wheel Oh, <laughs> well, I believe Morris has won before, so we're going to try that one more time. Yay, there we go. Miss Debbie will be getting that gift to you here very soon. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for continuing to support us as we um, go through this challenge together as far as uh, having to meet virtually instead of in person. So I'm going to open it up. Does anybody have any good news they'd like to share? <clears throat> 
I don't know if this 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 is partly good news. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Yes. What, what you got, Jamie? Um, both Barbara and I have tested positive. I have no symptoms. I feel great. She has got a slight fever and she's a little tired. Uh, in fact, she just took a shower after sleeping. So, uh, but we're in good spirits and uh, hopefully uh, soon we'll be able to test negative and get back, get back to work. Well, there you go. You know, we were just having the conversation um, amongst a few friends here saying, you know, we don't know anybody who's actually, okay, so sorry for that. Um, I'm surprised geez. at what I found out. As I, I, I said, I've, I'm showing no symptoms. Well, and so now, I mean, you know from first hand, I believe I had it back in November. And then I brought it home and shared it with Mark. So I think he had a low-grade version of it back in November. Yeah, a lot of people believe they know. Yeah, I mean, um, and each person, depending on their immune system, maybe it has a different experience. That's one of the many mysteries of this COVID thing. Yeah, um, and, but, and I went, to, I went to Georgia to give uh, a do one more transplant. They wouldn't let me do it because I have uh, my hemoglobin's a little high in my blood, <gasps> and so, and so I, and I think because I went down there, that's probably why I got it. Ah, uh, mm. yeah, I think that's what I'm guessing. Because well, uh, between the in my facility, everybody tested, nobody tested positive out of the whole oh, facility. Thank, thank goodness for that. But yeah, yeah with, the, with the traveling you had to do, who knows where you yeah. might have picked that up, huh? Yeah, who knows. So, Jamie, can you hear me? Yeah. I certainly hope that you guys stay well. Well, but we're, uh, as I said, I'm showing no symptoms. And Barbara is not getting any worse. She's, she's. Holding her own. Uh, Holding her own. <laughs> yeah. Holding well, very good. Maybe you, got, you picked up a few tips this morning from Morris that you can help yeah. to boost your immune systems. Yeah, there you go. And vitamin C and D. Yeah, yeah. Right. Definitely high doses, right? Absolutely, because the D helps the body absorb the C. So, yeah, you want to put those in concert together. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Awesome. Well, of course, you both are in our collective prayers. Absolutely. And Thank please you. keep us updated. Um, as things go along, how you're doing and, and improving and, and whatnot, so we all know. I Anybody will. else? Um, I do, Cindy. Yes, Mom. I, um, as I was telling you yesterday, uh, a couple of, uh, early, about a week or so ago, I went for a walk with my um, son and his family, and I had pulled my phone out of my pocket and, you know, to take pictures, and then later in the day, I had noticed I'd lost two $5 bills and I thought I'd lost them on the trail when I pulled my phone out of my pocket. Well, yesterday I was vacuuming my car and I found them. In the oh, car. I love funny. I, don't, oh. I love doing that. <laughs> found money is the best. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I went out shopping. <laughs> and, it, and, it almost, <laughs> and it almost doesn't matter how much you find. If you find like a dollar, you're you're thrilled, but if you find a five or a ten, you're like, huh? <laughs> yeah, because earlier in the, um, a couple of days before that, my grandsons had found some of uh, the quarters that had fallen out. So, you know, <laughs> you know and that's always good. <laughs> right, yeah. Like Jamie says, every little bit, it really doesn't matter how much. Found money is a good thing. <laughs> uh, and a quarter to a nine-year-old is like my ten, my $10 was to me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I did have some good news I wanted to share, especially with this group, who most of whom know. Um, I actually got an email from Jay. Oh, Jay! Yeah. Oh, Jay! Yeah, very unexpected, and it's been quite a while, and um, so it was really cool to get just a big, big, big surprise. So I'm hoping he'll email back again, but yeah, he was doing good, and and that was that was a very nice surprise. So I wanted to Yay. share it because I know many of you know and miss him and love him like yeah, we do. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Yeah, we miss our Jay. Yeah, we do. Yeah, well, he's doing pretty good. He's a big brother now. Of a, so how, a old little, is, how old is Jay now? He'll be eleven in right. October, All and right. he now has four siblings younger than him. The newest one was born wow. at the end of April. A little boy so now he, mm -hmm. he has three little sisters and one little brother mm -hmm. hey oh, yeah. sure he's a good big brother yeah Bless yeah. His heart. yeah all right anybody else have any good news 
Oh, I talked to Marilyn on the phone. Oh. Yes, I called Marilyn the other day, and as usual, she was in the bathroom when I called her, and she didn't get to the phone in the middle of my recording, and she just sounded like Marilyn, upbeat, and, you know, and was so glad that I called her, and was wondering if we were still doing that technology stuff <laughs> <laughs> online, and, and um so, you know, she just wanted everybody to know she's doing well and she will be glad when they can have visitors again. Yeah, no kidding. And so she's doing well and sounds well. Wonderful. All right, well, let's just go ahead and move along to our peace song. God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, the presence of God watches over us, wherever we are, God is, and all is well. <laughs> 